Our next speaker is Ulrike Kreiser. Uh, she is Vice President from the GS1 Global Office for the uh, Healthcare Department. And she wants to share with us uh, the advantages uh, of the standard and the uh, new uh, technology they just implemented. Ulrike? Thanks a lot. And <clears throat> first of all, my apologies. You can hear I have a light, slight cold. And I also am very aware that I'm now between you and uh, the late lunch. So I try to uh, be quick. Besides being uh, responsible at GS1 Global Office for Healthcare, I'm also a hospital pharmacist. So I've worked 11 years in the University Hospital of Aachen. So um, my heart is very much with the topic we are dealing here with. And um, Chris did an excellent job in explaining the technology background. I wanted to bring us a little bit back also why we are all here. That just to be very much aware of what we are talking here about. A very short introduction to GS1 as a standard organization. We are non-for-profit. We have uh, member organizations in 111 countries and I have a number of my colleagues from Belgium, Netherlands and UK here with me today. You all use our standards in your daily life when you go shopping. The beep at the supermarket cashier is uh, something which we all do without, I think, thinking about it. I would really wish that the beep in hospitals would be as omnipresent as in the supermarkets. We have created already eight years ago a global user group, GS1 Healthcare which is composed of all the stakeholders in the supply chain. And you can see here that our mission is really improving patient safety, and we believe that with that we will also improve supply chain efficiency. Major stakeholders are working with us on global level, you can see here, as well on the pharmaceutical as on the medical device side. And they are working to develop global standards which can improve patient life. It is difficult to get hospitals involved on global level because it's not the normal business which we do in hospitals, uh, but we have a number of hospitals which are engaging with us and, and develop global standards because we believe that standards can only benefit everybody if all the parties agree to it. And there are much more across the world who are working with us uh, hospitals on local level and other stakeholders on local level, regulatory bodies, associations, we're working closely with FBI but also with Hugomed, and we have since a number of years an MOU with the EAHP, and we are very happy about that. In our work, we consider very much always the five patient rights, which were already mentioned, and we mentioned it again during our tour here, the right product, the right route, the right dose, the right time and the right patient. And that's, I guess, why we see uh, in the world that hospitals like here in Leuven are starting to repackage, to relabel, and we believe that it's not the best way forward. We believe that products which are manufactured, produced, identified, and labeled by the manufacturers are the most safe products. That's why we created a while ago a new work item uh, which was had the stupid name Level Below the Each and I will explain to you why it was called like that. 
And in principle, it was really about primary marking and identification to develop a standard because manufacturers, when requested by hospitals to mark on that level, said there's no standard there. Without a standard, we can't do anything. The detail allocation rules, which is our voluntary standard, how to identify and allocate ketones, as Chris mentioned very well already, to products as well pharmaceuticals as medical devices is really our standard, but did also at that time not contain anything around level below the each. I don't need to explain that in any more words. Chris has done a fantastic job around ketone and ketone, uh, dif the different length and composition. But it's very important that each Packaging level requires a different ketone. We saw just um, that also here there was uh, some primary package and secondary packaging holding the same ketone. That should not be the case. Or the same identification number here. That should not be the case. They should have different ketones on every packaging level. Also, this you have seen already, and uh, it shows you the secondary package. We must be very clear around that. It's the package which we see more and more across the world, the data matrix with the four data elements for the secondary package, especially with regards to anti-counterfeiting issues. And I think everybody in Europe knows around the FMD, the activities here. The level below the each, in uh, GS1, the each was the secondary package. Uh, in our system so far, the smallest unit was always the one scanned at the POS as well in healthcare as in retail. But as you know, we have the level below the each which is scanned at the point of care. And for bedside scanning, we need identification on that level. So during the work, uh, we have developed some new definitions and my thanks go to AHP and some other global experts who have helped us to uh, define this. So the single unit is the single tablet which is contained, for example, in a package. Then the blister is the single unit package or our GS1 primary package. Then we have the multiple unit package. You will recognize that specifically in the US you have uh, not so much blister package as here in Europe. And very clearly in our work group we said out of scope is the unit dose. So what is our standard and agreement? And uh, I'm very pleased to have one of the chairs of this group at GS1. The work groups are chaired by the users, so uh, one of the chairs is here in the room, and Frederick, many thanks for all the work on that. We said on the single unit, so the tablet as such, there is no expectation of having any ARDC, but there might be just an allocation of the GTEN possible for that. Then on the single unit package, the primary package, the minimum would be the GTEN. Other attributes like lot, batch, expiry serial number are voluntary. And on the secondary back, you have already seen G10 and other attribute data uh, really depending on the risk class in which these products are sold uh, are the requirements. It costs money, and I think Chris has already said that. It's money and it's work. But I wanted to highlight a recent report which was done by McKinsey, which you can find on the McKinsey website, but also on ours, called Strengths in Unit which is uh, talking about the benefits which derive. And I think you will find some very interesting numbers in there. And the first one I think is very close to our topic here. The global standards implemented could save 22,000 to 43,000 lives a year. And with that, we would derive a lot of also benefits money-wise because we would really have a much better supply chain we would have better control of our inventories. And adopting a single standard would cost also less than have multiple standards. To Eris Human, that was the famous study, and I don't know if you know the case of Dennis Quaid and his twins, who got by uh, error the, a much higher adult dose of heparin and nearly did bled to death. Twins are easy to be mixed up also, drugs are sometimes easy to be mixed up. And you can ensure 
Nobody wants to harm the patient, not the doctors, not the nurses, and not the pharmacists, but errors are happening in daily life. We should make sure that our staff in hospitals is supported as well as possible in treating patients. So, what is the best way forward if we think about preventing medication errors? Do we need customer pressure and requirements? We see uh, in a number of countries that big hospitals group are going together and just asking their suppliers to deliver to them products in the way they require it with GS1 standards or otherwise they don't buy any more from them? Do we need a regulation, a directive, which for sure will force everybody to do something, but it will take a lot of time. Have, do we have the time to wait? Or can we achieve a roadmap? Can we achieve an agreement between the stakeholders? What can be done in which time frame? And I think that is something which we should discuss this afternoon in, in the working groups. I wanted to show you just some examples from across the world. I heard just uh, last week in the US that 60% of all hospitals are now scanning there, covering 70% of all hospital beds. Of course, we have a regulation in the US, so um, the drugs are there available on that level with identification. In Denmark, and I'm happy to have also representatives of Ambrose here in the room, they are requiring identification on primary packaging level for certain products, and they are moving forwards while time is moving. In Brazil and Argentina, we see multiple hospitals who have introduced bedside scanning. And I must say, I was, for example, impressed by one hospital who started, like Leuven, to do that themselves. But they work consequently with their suppliers, asking them to do the, the identification marking themselves, and offered also some um, benefit, some more money, if they would deliver with uh, identification on that level. In France, and Ferry can truly talk more about that, we have new requirements for the level below the each identification level. In Taiwan, we had a study which can lead perhaps into regulation, it was done by a university, but the regulatory bodies there impressed by the study are thinking now about uh, releasing regulations. Uh, in hospitals, in the Netherlands, uh, I think we have one of the uh, fathers of bedside scanning with us today uh, have shown that benefits are there since a long time. Austria and Switzerland have shown that cytostatic product from production to the bedside would really provide traceability security. In Switzerland there is also a voluntary agreement between all the stakeholders. So a lot is happening. <coughs> I think what is really important is that we overcome this. And Chris mentioned that also already. The famous, the hen and the egg. Who is moving first? We should really move all together. Because at the end, it's all about us. This is my little grandson, who is now two years old. And I for sure want that he is treated well and safe when he's going into a hospital. And please be aware, tomorrow all of us can be patients. Thank you very much.
very technical, but if you use packaging indicators, some companies start to do one, two, three for the different packaging levels, which you should not do. It's, the region is a dump number shown to a database. But the, the, the GS1 standard doesn't say uh, it's uh, zero 01, then it's the... No, no. It says it's a non-meaning for packaging indicators. Okay, thank you.